going to show you a quick tip on okra. Um, okra is a plant that I try to time so that it's large enough to have at least four or five large leaves by July. July and August is when our temperatures here in northern Kentucky get into the 90s. Matter of fact, I believe today they're calling for 95 degrees. You can see that most of my plants here do have four or five large leaves at least. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prune my okra plants back. Any plant that has more than four or five large leaves, I'm going to plant them back so that, that all is left is four or five newer leaves. So let's take this one right here. There's one. There is one, two, three, four, five, six leaves. So I want to take the largest leaves and just cut them off. I'm using shears. You can pinch them off if you want, but I usually use shears on okra because the stems are can be tough. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one also. So I've left three on there, which might seem a little low, but there's some smaller ones starting to form over on this side. So I'm going to do the same thing on each additional okra plant. This plant, you can tell, has a lot of large leaves and a lot of new growth also. So we're going to get rid of the large leaves, the largest leaves. until we are left with four or five smaller leaves. And sorry about the camera. I say this every time I do cell phone videos, I wish I would have brought a different camera, but I was already in the garden working. And this is what I ended up with. One, two, three. So I can go ahead and get rid of another large leaf. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. One, two, three. Looks like we got about four on there. Now the other thing that you're doing too is you're opening up the area around this for the sun to beat down on the ground because okras really love a lot of heat. The more heat, the merrier. So I'm going to do this with each plant. Here's another one. A lot of large leaves, a lot of small leaves. We're going to get rid of all of these large leaves. Then all of these leaves are going to get added to the compost pile. Probably a couple more I can get off of here. Go ahead and get rid of this one. And these are all relatively young. I could probably leave them. But I'm going to go ahead and clip them. We're just going to do the same thing with every one. So these are my burgundy ones, how they look now. Much more compact. Over here are my Clemson Spineless. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Just looking at the plant, finding out where the largest leaves are at. We're going to clip them off. Now the other thing we're doing too is we're opening up so that the plants aren't shading each other out too by doing this. This one's pretty large, Clemson spineless. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to get rid of all 
of the larger leaves. This one's actually got where there's about to be some flowers. Kind of hard to do this one handed. I'm sorry about the video. Another large leaf. It's actually another large leaf. I need to clean this one up so I can kind of see what I got going on here. Probably one down here that needs to go. Now some people have said that the stress of doing this causes them to basically go into a do or die type mode. They just want to live and by trimming them like this, you're kind of forcing them into a into a mode where they just want to grow really rapidly to survive. And uh, that's kind of been the experience that I've had too. Let's see, I can actually get rid of these up here. So as you can see, where these plants were shading each other out, now they're not. This one over here is still shading some on this one, but once I get rid of its leaves, it's gonna be fine. So we'll go ahead and do it next. and be easier for me to get on the other side but now you can see that I've opened up the canopy for these to get a lot more light and that's really the key you know I think I'm going to get rid of a couple more of these one more there I could let's see I got one two I better leave that well I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it I just don't like it there so I've only got three leaves on that one once it's all said and done but either way it'll be fine and uh, this is kind of what I ended up with so I'll show you the results of this in a couple weeks Okay, so what I ended up doing with the okra leaves, instead of putting on the compost pile, I took them over where my cucumbers wasn't really doing so great. They were actually growing out in the wrong direction, so I straightened them up and put them up on the fence, which is what they normally grow up. 
And then I laid the okra leaves on the ground. And what that'll do is when it rains, that will help retain some of the moisture. And then as it breaks down and decays, it'll add some nutrients back into the soil. So I kind of run a little short on straw because normally I use straw everywhere. And this year, you know, due to COVID, I didn't want to go get straw. And, and uh, I made do with like some shredded cardboard and straw um, as mulch this year. You can kind of see over here, there's straw in just about most of the beds, but I just run short on some of them. And uh, anyways, that is basically how I have repurposed the leaves. I cut off the okra plant to help in the garden control moisture and also to break down and add nutrients to the soil.